quick. Tell me what the keyboard shortcut is to type the registered trademark symbol. Or how about an M dash? If you don't use these characters very often, there's no reason to clutter your head with trying to remember the shortcuts. InDesign has a couple of features that make inserting special characters a breeze. I'm going to select this text frame on my page and zoom in to 400% by pressing Command-4 on the Mac or Control-4 on Windows. Now I'll double-click after the word gallery here to switch to the type tool and place the cursor there. I'd like to add a certain special character. And to find it, I'm going to go to the type menu. And I'm going to look almost all the way down near the bottom at this menu called Insert Special Character. Inside this Symbols submenu, we'll find many of the characters that people often need, such as bullets, copyrights, ellipsis, the paragraph symbol, that's the little pilcro symbol that is kind of mysterious, and then finally, here's the one we're looking for, the registered trademark symbol. As soon as I click that, InDesign types the character for me. There are lots of other special characters hiding in there too. So for example, let's say I don't know how to type this N dash. You want to use an N dash instead of a normal dash or a hyphen when you're talking about a range of numbers or dates. So let's say I delete that. I just press the delete key. How would I get a new one? No problem. Go back to the type menu, go back to insert special characters, and then instead of a symbol, I'm going to choose hyphens and dashes. There it is. There's the N dash. Click it and it places it. Now perhaps I don't like the amount of space there is between that six and the end dash. I can place my cursor between them simply by clicking there, and I can add a little bit of space with a special white space character. Down here near the bottom of the type menu, I'm gonna choose insert white space. And inside this submenu, you'll find all kinds of special spaces. For example, the very large M space. It's always wide. It's always the size of your text, in fact. So in 12-point text, it's 12 points wide. Or you could choose the sort of medium-sized N space, which is half an M. But we want a really tiny little space, so I'm gonna choose the hair space. When I choose that, InDesign actually places a special width hair space in between those two characters. Now, there are all kinds of other ways to add and remove spaces between characters, such as kerning, and I'm going to be talking about that in a later chapter. But it's great to know that InDesign has these special characters to use, if you want to use them. Of course, many of the fonts that you're using have special characters built into them, ornaments and math symbols and all kinds of stuff, but you may not know how to type them. Fortunately, InDesign has a special feature called the Glyphs panel, and you can find that under the Window menu, or even easier, under the Type menu. Just choose Glyphs. The Glyphs panel shows me every character that's inside my current font, wherever the cursor is. It's really quite incredible. You can just scroll through this list and find all kinds of things. In fact, I'm gonna make this panel a little bit bigger so we can see it better, and then I'll click this Zoom button to make the characters even larger too. You can scroll through this list and see every different character inside of a font. And some of these things, I would have no idea how to type. I don't even know what some of these characters are. Now, for this document, I'd like to place a special ornament, kind of a symbol, before the P in this word Pittinger. So I'm going to click once before the letter P. And now, I'm going to change the font inside the Glyphs panel. Down here in the lower left corner, I can select this font just by clicking it. And then I'm going to change to Wingdings. I'll just type W-I-N and InDesign guesses that I want the font Wingdings. Now I'll hit Return or Enter, and you can see all the different characters inside the Wingdings font. I can scroll through here until I find just the character I want. This one looks nice, so I'll double-click on it, and InDesign inserts that character where the cursor is. Now notice that InDesign also placed that character up here in the recently used area. And that's kind of cool, because I might want to use that same character over and over again. For example, maybe I want to put that same glyph before the letter E in Exhibit. So all I have to do is click once before the E. And you'll notice that the Glyphs panel has changed to reflect the cursor. In this case, that E is set to Myriad Pro Bold, so the Glyphs panel reflects that. But it still keeps my recently used glyph up here. So all I have to do is double-click on it, and InDesign automatically adds it. Now, Wingdings and special fonts like this, and many of the pro fonts from Adobe, have a lot of special characters in there. So check them out. Take a little time to go through and just scroll through the Glyphs panel. See what kind of treasures are hiding in there.